election. Okay, uh, 925 years ago, on the 27th of November, the year 1095, in a field in Claremont, France, a pope, Pope Urban II, gave a clarion call to go to the defense of Constantinople, which had been, um, had been um, under attack uh, by uh, rising forces, I think the Selkirk Turks and others, and he gave a clarion call to go free the Holy Land. Uh, one of the best books out there about the military conflict between Islam and the West is Sword and Scimitar by Raymond Ibrahim. I want to bring in Abraham, uh, Raymond now. Raymond, thank you for joining us today in a weekend. We're going to be fighting all weekend to try to get a fair and legal vote here in the Republic of the United States. I want to go back in time and talk about this broader conflict that's been going on. Tell us what happened on that day and why was it people make it like we're uh, the, the Judeo-Christian West were the aggressors. We were actually in response to an onslaught. Was that not correct, sir? Absolutely. Good to be with you again, Stephen. Um, what you're referring to, the, the Council of Clermont and the First Crusade, is actually the pivotal pivotal event of the entire Middle Ages. And this is well recognized. And um, I'll summarize it to you, but I'll also tie it with what's going on today, because there's a lot of fake news about the Crusades as well. So as you said, in 1095, Pope Urban called the First Crusade. What was happening in the context, which we rarely hear, is that the Turks, the Seljuk Turks, uh, um, had overrun Asia Minor, what we call today Turkey, because they ended up conquering it, of course. Asia Minor was one of the most ancient Christian regions um, in the world. That's where St. Paul wrote most of his, uh, many of his epistles to. And um, so right at that time, literally the accounts talk of hundreds of thousands of Christians being not just killed, but sadistically tortured, burned alive, uh, flayed, and of course, mass, uh, you know, sex slavery, rapes, abductions, destroying churches, thousands, literally thousands of churches. In fact, this is connected to what's happening in Armenia right now in Azerbaijan, because right before, right then, around that time, in the 10, right around 1060, right before the Crusades, Armenia was being destroyed by the Turks. And uh, its capital, Ani, the historic capital of Armenia, was burned to the ground with over a thousand and one churches torched as well. So that's the background. And the emperor, the Byzantine emperor, contacted the pope and pled with him and said, please help us. We're both Christians. Um, and you see what's happening. And as and, and at the same time, the, the Holy Sepulchre, the Church of Resurrection, where Christ rose, where, where there's a church in Jerusalem, was also under attack. It had been under, under attack before that. In fact, it was destroyed and it was rebuilt again. And so it was a real mess and pilgrims were being murdered and mauled and extorted and they would cut their bellies open to see if they're hiding gold and treasure and this sort of thing. So that's the background. So Pope Urban calls for the Crusades and it had a, a, an amazing effect. It just snowballed and Christians from Western Europe, from everywhere, mostly from France, which is again ironic because really the, the Crusades, not just the first one, were always spearheaded by the Franks, the French. And it's kind of interesting to see where their descendants are right now. Well, the, well, the you know, Fr France, you know, it's, it's gone through the Napoleonic Wars and World War One, so it's not the France that you had. But I mean, in 1066, what they, they the Normans uh, take over, uh, de defeat the Saxons. You've got, you've got, uh, you've got, um, uh, you've got then t 1095. The, these were principally Norman knights, right? I mean, this was a call to arms that ended up being uh, the field army that ended up being the First Crusade was predominantly uh, by the Norman uh, and, and the French, correct? Yeah, absolutely. The Normans, you have especially Bohemond, who takes over Antioch, but you definitely have a lot of the Franks. In fact, the Arabic word for the Crusaders till today is uh, El Frank, Franks, um, because they, they basically conflated any white Christian from Europe as a Frank, um, because that was the predominance originally. But again, it, 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 like you say, it depends on what you mean by Franks. Um, King Richard was actually considered a Frank um, because of his sort of through his mother's line. At any rate, it was uh, from Muslim eyes, it was just European Christians coming uh, and doing what they're doing. And it's just interesting because the message that the Pope um, imparted was basically what you're doing is you are fulfilling Christ's two greatest commandments, God's two greatest commandments, really, which is love God with all your heart. And that's what you're doing by rescuing the Holy Sepulchre and the Holy Land, because it was being completely desecrated. And love your fellow man. And that's what you're doing by, by rescuing the Eastern Christians. Um, 
But I know because time is so limited, I'd like to just show you now how all that's been changed. Um, you know, this idiot, this issue that we're dealing with and what you're talking about today um, and what's plaguing us, you know, fake news and the media not wanting to acknowledge what's really happening and suppressing it. This goes way back and it's really especially deeply entrenched in academia. Um, and uh, so what I've told you right now, you're not going to come across this in any well-respected, you know, academic prestigious publication. They're going to give you a completely different narrative about how for 400 years from the year from the rise of Islam in the seventh century up until the Crusades, everything was fine until an evil papal play and greed and, you know, hypocritical Christians decided to go and just ruin it all and, and attack and kill Muslims. And until today, Muslims are angry because of the Crusades, and that's why they're killing people, including 9-11. That is actually, believe it or not, the standard version that you will get um, in an academic setting about the Crusades, when in fact, it's as I told you, and it's what's happening today, because if you look at what's happening today with Muslims, especially to Christians and Christian minorities, it's the same story. So it's a, a very unwavering continuity, and, and, and all around it, it's spread past and present with fake news. Uh, Raymond, we've got to wrap up, but the book is Sword and Scimitar. It is a military history of uh, uh, Islam in the West. Uh, Victor Davis Hanson and Daniel Pipes on the cover recommended. I don't think you could get two higher recommendations. Raymond Ibrahim, thank you very much for joining us on War Room. Thanks very much, Stephen.